Hey guys, Jurassic Man here, and today we are going to review the Mattel Attack Pack Dimorphodon. Now, before any of you say, Oh, why did you do the adult Indoraptor first? Well, I want to save that for later, because I'm thinking of going back to, uh, to Walmart to go get another one, maybe? Carnotaur? Hmm? Maybe? I don't know. But either way, I'm going to do this guy first, and if you saw the video, you would know that there's more than just the Dimorphodon, such as Blue, the Gallimimus, you saw the Sticky, I could have got any of those, so why did I get the Dimorphodon? I have no idea, I just like the design. It's been a long time since we have actually had a good uh, flying reptile in the series. The last good ones we got was back in uh, 2001 was the JP uh, Alpha Pteranodon and the regular Pteranodon. And then there was the Dimorphodon from a past movie, and that one wasn't very good at all either. So, I'm glad that Mattel finally made some flying reptiles. And before you say they're dinosaurs, don't say they're dinosaurs, because in reality they're called flying reptiles, although they are part of the Archosaur family, which does contain dinosaurs in it. But then again, they're not dinosaurs. They're archosaurs, but they're their own genus, which is the pteranodons, or pterosaurs, or whatever Dimorphodon is. I think pterosaur is only the Cretaceous ones. Dimorphodon is a Triassic one. So, flying reptiles. Just say flying reptile. It's easier than just saying dinosaur, because it's not a dinosaur. Besides, whenever somebody says a uh, flying dinosaur, they're just saying a bird. Okay, so let's get started. Now the Dimorphodon comes in this new packaging style, everyone has seen this before, it has the Owen and the blue, the Jurassic World on top, a posable Dimorphodon, attack pack, let's see if we can focus on that, attack pack, Owen blue, blah blah blah, serene up, and then we got the back, I saw all of them in, the t in Walmart, it was blue, green raptor, Gallimimus, the Dalphosaurus and the Dimorphodon. There was also the uh, the scan thing, which you can scan right here. Uh, I guess right there. So if any of you want to scan it, you can scan it right there. Uh, put it in different positions, see if it scans for you. But if it doesn't, at least you got it so far. So let's get this. Oh wait, get this in clear view. Let's get this out of its package. Now, I've seen people take these out of the package by opening the bottom, like in Jurassic Collectibles or even the King Beaver. But then there's this open hole right here. What is this for? Hmm. Your finger could fit in it. There's an open gap right here. There's a slit mark here. Oh, I know. It's how to open it. Instead of just tearing the whole thing out, you could just open it like this. I want to get a clean cut out of this. It's not very clean. And there you go. You got Jurassic World right here. All turned up. That's sad. Put this back here. And you got Dimorphodon. It comes out like this. Jurassic World again. And then you got a Dimorphodon, which comes out pretty easy. And there you have it. Now the Dimorphodon is a really good sculpt, and it has multiple articulations. Uh, I see in many reviews for this right now, so I'm guessing it's not that very original. But I got a flashlight, so we can get very good sculpts and detail. So articulations, it has one, two, three. Four and five. I would count this as six, but after seeing Beaver's review of it and not very surprised, the legs on the back legs can actually rotate forward and back, giving it that flying motion. And the head can pivot down and all the way up that far. And the jaw itself can open pretty much that wide. So I wouldn't try to because it looked like it was kind of flimsy out right there. And the wings can go 
this far back and this far forward. So basically you have this dimorphodon in many flank positions if you want, if you have a clear stand. Uh, I don't. And then the tail itself is this flimsy rubbery plastic. You can move it but it's not much motion. So let's get the flashlight. And something I've been noticing is that if you actually shine through the light it has this transparent uh, look to it and that's pretty cool. Great attention to detail right there. And as you can see the Dermophotom focuses. I have no idea what's going on with this thing. I've been trying to focus this for like two minutes straight already. But it doesn't want to. But I'm pretty sure those that have seen Beaver's review for this guy and many of the other tech pack, you can tell that it has this nice dino fuzz. Uh, sorry, not dino. I forgot what it's called. Uh, I'll put it in text right here on what it's actually called right here. And yeah. But yeah, articulations on this guy is very cool. And play wise, it is very playable. You can have it in many different stances, many different positions. You can make one looking up, like it's about to attack, about to flight, or looking at his death. The attack packs are very unique because they're the small line which can be used to get eaten by other dinosaurs of the series, or in this case a sea reptile that could jump this up, but then again that was a pteranodon and not the dimorphodon. But there's no guy, I don't, there's no helicopter set that has a guy shooting at it, so eh, I guess there's that. But anyways, the coloration on this guy is very nice, it has this sort of orangish brown coloration to it. You can see it's pretty reflective as well. The eye itself is this nice orange. I don't know if that picks up. It has nice attention to details. Very well and very rugged. It actually feels like rough plastic, which I don't think that's what they're going for, but you know, it's 2018. You gotta expect what you expect. But yeah. And each paint on this guy, as far as I can see, is very accurate, or not accurate. Uh, there's no splotches, no messes. So, mine's came out very good. I don't know why some people got bad ones, but that's just them. But yeah, articulation is great, pain wise is great, and playability is great and awesome as well. So, let's get right into comparisons. Here it is compared to a 3.75 inch figure. This is Cassian. And as you can see, it is very compatible. If you saw in the movie in Jurassic World, you saw the, the Dimorphodon were pretty large uh, flying reptiles and stuff. Dang it, it's not a flying dinosaur. Sorry, I know you're probably correcting me in the comments, but sorry. Anyways, this is scale wise for the new toy line, so this looks pretty good and pretty accurate. Next we have the 4 inch scale of uh, human figures, which is Alan Grant. And as you can see, it's pretty scale wise. Uh, I want to say 2 on point, but it's pretty good for itself. And here it is scaled with the Baryonyx from the Rover line from the same series. And as you can see, I'm pretty sure they scale up pretty well. Let's get back that 3.7 inch figure. If anything, I think that scales up very, very nicely. Yep, so nicely. And I really love this colorations that they choose for these guys. It makes it natural looking instead of the whole uh, dark bland versions that they always get. They get nice colorations as well too. So I'm happy for that. What score would I give this? I would give this a 4 out of 5. Not a 4.5, but I love the scope, I love the details, and I love the articulations. Uh, I kind of wish there was a bit more to this. There are some color variations that are going to be released soon. Uh, pictures on the side right there. These different colorations look a bit better than this one that we got. But for standard and the uh, standard line, it's pretty well. Pricing is pretty average too, and it's pretty good that it's going to be one of the few common ones you could get, so they could really army builds with these Dimorphodons. 
Anyways, I hope you guys liked this review. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.